joining us on set after returning from hosting extended coverage of the International Eucharistic Congress in Hungary is executive editor of EWTN News and Washington Bureau Chief Dr. Matthew Bunsen. Matthew, it's so great to have you here. Great to be with it you. It was wonderful watching all of the exciting coverage. I don't know how you're not exhausted. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about the impact of the papal visits. The Pope has been traveling extensively, and Cardinal Sacco mentioned how it impacted Iraq so profoundly to have the Pope there. Do you think this is going to have the same impact in Hungary? Yeah, every papal trip brings something different. Every papal trip has its own forms of influence. And in this case, uh, Pope Francis's very brief visit, only about seven hours to Hungary, had a very specific purpose, and that was to close this International Eucharistic Congress. In that sense, it was tightly aimed by Pope Francis. As with any papal trip, of course, he also met with leaders, uh, civil government, and also ecclesiastical. We can talk more about that in a minute. But his focus on the Eucharist, as you mentioned uh, in his closing homily, uh, was a capstone to what was a wider week uh, of the International Eucharistic Congress. So we have to put that together, that entire experience of the Congress, and Pope Francis was the punctuation mark, the exclamation mark on the week. So let's talk about the civil leaders then. Uh, Pope Francis did meet with Viktor Orban and with Janos Eder, and um, Janos being Catholic himself, Viktor being Calvinist. Uh, there were things they did not discuss, like immigration, right. but things they did discuss where they did want to come together. What were those? Well, Janos Eder was especially notable in the Eucharistic Congress because uh, his testimony during the Congress uh, was unabashedly Catholic. Uh, he also quoted Laudato Si, which picked it up and picked it up and held it up for everyone to see. But that goes to part of the conversation that uh, Viktor Orban and Pope Francis had, and that was looking at the environment. But they also had one other area of key common ground, and that is family life. You know, Pope Francis and his uh, in-flight presser going back from Slovakia to the Vatican mm -hmm. uh, stressed uh, matrimony. He stressed marriage, the importance of family and life. life. So, and life. So those are areas of deep common ground. Uh, you interviewed Kathleen Novak, one of the representatives of the Hungarian government, last week, and she was stressing that importance of family life. Yes. And then one other area that wasn't really much discussed but is of common ground is the great concern that the Hungarian government has for persecuted Christians around the world, that they have a, a separate ministry looking into that. So there was common ground, but yes, there were some areas of disagreement. And the common ground also included Eucharistic revival. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, any Eucharistic Congress has as its goal uh, to deepen our awareness and love of the real presence of the Eucharist and then to carry that forward. That was one of the points that Pope Francis was making. In the streets of Budapest, we had a Eucharistic procession the night before the, the final Mass with the Pope, about 150,000 people stretching from the Parliament, which is situated right there on the Danube, all the way to Hero Square, where the final Mass was held. Mm. This was a spectacle uh, that Hungary had not seen for a long time, but it was a kind of public witness that many in a secularizing Europe would say is simply not possible anymore, that there just wouldn't be that much interest. Clearly, there was intense interest, and it goes back to this idea of preserving and advancing a Christian culture, a Christian civilization in Hungary that can then help re-evangelize Western Europe. And the Eucharistic Congress has a role to play in that. Absolutely. And part of that Christian culture is reaching out to the marginalized. So in Hungary, we saw outreach to the Roma people, and then we saw it again in Slovakia. Tell That's us about right. that. Well, in uh, the Eucharistic Congress, there was the highly unusual event of a mass set in Livonian, which is the language of the Roma in Hungary. That was somewhat unprecedented. It was a gorgeous mass for anyone uh, who was actually watching it. But it was also part and parcel of the concern that Pope Francis brings, but also that the Hungarian Catholic Church brings, and that we're seeing also in the Slovak Catholic community, of this worry and concern for the marginalized, for mm -hmm. minority groups, especially the Roma, who have over the centuries been so persecuted. So it fits perfectly both within the concern pastorally of Pope Francis, but also with the Eucharist is calling us to do, and that is to be a sacrament of unity, to bring everyone in in the church who might have been forgotten over the centuries. Well, we've been watching Pope Francis go from country to country trying to bring people together, and so this is very much part and parcel of that mission, and we're going to watch that closely. Thank you, Matthew. Great to be with you.